Happy New Year. <laughs> kind of a phony Happy New Year. I'm Amanda. I'm Peggy. You are watching the Junction Fiber Mill Millcast. Yes. First episode of, of 2024. Unbelievable. We are pre-recording We are pre-recording this. this. So we're still sitting here in 2023. Right. But, but I have faith it will come. I, I yeah, it will, yeah well, no choice. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's time is flying by and 2024 is, I'm ready. Yeah? We've got a lot, a, 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 a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, and we're uh, going to talk about that more in the episode. Yeah, but, um, but we first. Have, but first, we're going to skip updates because, again, it's a pre-recorded episode. Yeah. There's not a lot new with us since last time. Yeah, but yeah. no, that, that thousand pounds of wool, it still isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> the spinner, we're still figuring we're it still out. We're still figuring but, it out. Um, what we have to tell you about today is yeah. we're going to do another knit along. We are, and this one, I am so jazzed by this one. This yeah. is, this is going to be fun. Where do you want to start? Should we just show the samples? All right. Okay. We'll dive right into this. We'll dive right in. Okay. This is called the Nourishment Cowl by Erica Field. Let me just feel. Yeah, Field, not Fields. Field. Um, and it was designed with our yarn and one of our custom processing yeah. customers' yarn in mind, Matt and Rachel from Meadowfed Lamb. Do you want to show that one too? Yeah. We've got it in a couple and different colors. And then we've got it in a different colorway. Samples. This is late October with our also very light uh, Farm Fresh Lux. And what I love about it is the high collar. Yeah. It's, it's just really adorable. So. And and it has the slit on the side. There's, so, there's really room. so much to talk about with this design. And okay. Erica, um, who you'll meet in just a moment, talk, we talk about it a little bit in a bit. But I just wanted to start by saying, what are we doing? Knit along. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. absolutely. So. I can't wait. Yeah, we did not knit either of these, because, no. and we're not even going to put them on for you because we want to wait until we have our own yes, to yes. do it with. Yes, this one's Erica's. Yep, this one's Erica's, and this one our awesome test knitter Emmett um, um, knit, knit this one. Knit that one. Thank you, Emmett. Thank you, Emmett. So the knit along, uh, you'll want to get your yarn in order. Yeah. As soon as possible. Because we're going to cast on next week. Next week, the eighth of January. The eighth of January, and we're going to again. We we don't want to. I think the timeline we've picked out is an adequate amount yeah, of time. Yeah, very doable. Yeah. So we're going to run from January 8th through February 27th, so yep. about two months, mm. month and a half or so. And we hope you join us again for Absolutely. this knit-along. Yeah. I'm excited. This is a perfect sort of piece for this time of year. It too. is. And, I, and I, yeah, this is good. I'm already trying to decide. I'm a little torn. But let's, okay, so where do you want to start here? Um, well, so just to lay out some rules of the knit along before we get into more on the yep. pattern. So it's going to work very similarly, actually the same as the knit along for the read this hat, where you can use any um, of the yarn that we sell on our site and you can knit it in that time period. And then if you submit it um, via a Google form or through email to us, we will enter you to win a prize. Which uh, I guess we haven't completely landed on, but we'll probably be a bit of It'll be yarn. amazing. <laughs> well, it'll certainly involve yarn. Yeah, yeah. it's yarn. But yeah. the main thing with these knit-alongs is just to get folks, um, you know, participating in the community. Yeah. Trying some different techniques. So throughout the knit-along, you can post to social media using the hashtag JFMKAL, and we will see your knit-along. Yeah. And um, mm. interact there. And we'll also have a group on Ravelry as well. So Fun. you can... Join in the fun of knitting together with the nourishment cowl, but to talk more about it, we had the designer Erica Field in at the mill, and I had a chance to speak with her. She's amazing. She's so kind. Yeah, such a nice lady. Yeah. So, without further ado, Erica, hi. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on the Millcast, and you are wearing your pattern. I am. I'm wearing nourishment cowl which was designed specifically with making tracks and some farm yarn that we're going to talk about. Yes. Well, before we jump into it, let's get to know you a little sure. bit. So can you talk about your business? I can. So I design under the name of Grapefruit and Gardenia, and I also have a podcast called Knit Kind. It's a great podcast. Um, and and you, you specifically mentioned it is for knitters to come together under the premise of kindness. Okay. Can you talk more about that? Sure. So I think, you know, a big part of the knitting community is for me is community. Mm -hmm. And before we had a pandemic, I would go every week once I had my son in preschool and sit around a table with women, and there weren't usually men, but occasionally, mm -hmm. um, multi-generational, and we would talk about life. We would talk about knitting. We would talk about everything. 
And then the pandemic happened and we all try to go virtual and mm -hmm. it, it filled a void for a little while. But now that we're kind of balancing in person and virtual, I just found we're back to a world where there's not as much kindness. Hmm. We had perspective. I don't want to say we lost perspective, but you know, we're back to the rush. We're back to all of this. And so I wanted to create a place where either people who can't come together in person or don't for some reason can come online and feel like they have that experience a little bit. Yeah. And it just seems like knitting podcasts have gotten so popular. People love to like watch them while they're mm -hmm. knitting, which I think is just, it's such a fun way to connect to like this new technology with this very old craft and tradition of knitting. Right. So that's great. And, and have you, how it's global. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, you, so you'll have people watching from around the world, which blows my mind. Yeah. So how, how have you found the community to be? really nice overall I would say and I also end up finding test knitters and so now I have test knitters from around the globe which is so cool helpful and cool at the same time that's great um so I would like to hear a little bit more about how you got into knitting originally and and what brought you sort of to the path of okay I'm a knitter now I want to be a pattern designer yes. which is kind of a whole separate thing it is a whole separate thing I came to knitting when I had a child okay and uh, I had grandmothers who had knitted for me I went back to work, was in the crazy hustle and bustle, and then my child needed me, my family needed me, mm -hmm. and I started staying home. Um, and of course, the misnomer of the stay-at-home mom. Uh huh. So I jumped into knitting as a way to uphold traditions in our family and have something special that, that I could cherish, that my son could cherish. And um, the knitting journey was its own path, right? Okay. It started with my grandmother knitted us acrylic sweaters with intarsia. Yep. And that's where I started. And I you jumped into intarsia. I, yes, <laughs> I kind still of, haven't touched it yet. <laughs> more or less. I did a few of them. It's not my sweet spot. Okay. Um, but the sweet spot was the nostalgia and the connection to the okay. past and my family. Your mom and didn't knit, or, or my mom says it. Or <laughs> sorry, mom, but my mom says it skips a generation. <laughs> okay. Yes, I think that's probably yeah. true. <laughs> yes. Um, so both of my parents, uh, both of my grandmothers, knitted. Okay. And in many other crafts as well. And so I had never walked into a local yarn store. Mm -hmm. I had gone to Michael's, I had gone to Joann's, yep. all of these places. Um, and then the first time I walked in and learned about needles and all the, you know, I had gone to wool festivals, but again, you had that perspective of like wool, crunchy wool, right? And I still, right. I love crunchy Itchy. wool, <laughs> yeah. but it is very different yep. from, from its tradition. And so now what I have really loved as a knitter and eventually as a designer is learning about the history of it, um, what my priorities are as they align with my values, yet not judging when other people's might be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole other piece with the knit kind, right? Okay. I'm not there to, to judge what people want to use for their fibers, but I do also really want to promote, which we're going to talk about a little bit today, the farm yarns and yep. the natural fibers and yeah. local. Yeah, you're right. There is, there does tend to be, and like, I hope the mill isn't really a part of this. Like, I think everyone should just be like doing crafts and making stuff mm -hmm. with their hands, whether that's knitting or whatever. I think for my life that has added so much over the years. Like I've been doing crafts since I was too young to remember, mm -hmm. but certainly like when I got started with knitting, I was knitting with Michael's yarn. Right. It was just what, what there was. And then, mm -hmm. you know, throughout my journey, I found wool and like, I, I don't go back to acrylic, mm -hmm. but I think as long as people are out there knitting and, and, and also that like, you know, sometimes it's like unaffordable for folks to exactly. like get into to doing stuff with like, you know, certain yarns yeah. and, and what have you. So that's great to hear that you're promoting yeah. kindness yes. in this community yeah. that, yeah, probably can it sometimes be a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about the nourishment yes. cowl. So the nourishment cowl. So the piece of me transitioning from a knitter yep. to a designer was a little bit of just an adventure. Can, okay. can I do this? Right. Yeah. I, I read patterns or I look for things and there might be certain gaps where I would, and this is one of the styles. So it, it plays right into this. I would look for a cowl that would keep my neck warm because I get cold when I have the sweater I've well, we live in New England. We live in New England. <laughs> um, and would also cover my shoulders, right? Yep. And so one of the design styles that I've done, partially because there aren't a ton of them out there, mm -hmm. and so I do feel like I'm maybe filling a gap for people who are looking for the same type of design, is this design with a neck and you can adjust the height of it. Yep. And in some of my designs, you can adjust the depth. With this one, it's, it is one size here, but you can still adjust the height of it. Okay. And this is, you know, large enough to accommodate any neck size. Yep. I, I've had testers of all okay. sizes, so that's important. And then over the shoulders. And so when I design, 
usually something drives it. It might be nature and trying to capture the look of the colors mm -hmm. or something about the texture of nature. Yep. Um, sometimes the yarn leads that process, so I'll see a yarn in a certain color and it will evoke something and I want to design. And with Nourishment Cowl, you know, I've said it's a little bit of each. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit of discovering your beautiful yarn. Thank you. Hearing <laughs> your story and Peg's story, which I say in the pattern where you can find that origin story because um, really it's so authentic and I oh, think so many you. people have connected with your story and I see, you know, I haven't actually met Amanda until today, <laughs> yeah. but I've met Peg at a few festivals and seeing the way that people come up to you, it's it's like striking a deeper chord within people's thank selves you. and emotions. Um, and that's very genuine. So thank you for doing that for the knitting community. And so the nod to that is about nourishing relationships mm -hmm. and that connection to nourishing our world, the earth and farm yarns. And so what I designed here was I, I like many designers, we'll look through Barbara Walker stitch books okay. or other things. And that's where the Florentine Frieze, which is the pattern in the top here, mm -hmm. comes in. I just thought that would be beautiful in a lower contrast, making tracks and farm yarn. Yep. And then I wanted to have the same kind of style and I wanted it to be a nod to friendship and taking care of each other and the earth. And so I did seed stitch because of course seeds are where. Yeah, you are begins. so thoughtful. Like yeah. if, if you look at the pattern, it's just, it's not just like here's here's some stitches mm -hmm. here's how you do this there's a whole backstory which i think right. is so it's sort of like you know in the knitterly journey like you go from i just want to learn to knit to connect maybe with like traditions or people my grandmother people exactly. in my family then you're learning okay i actually want this yarn to be from a certain place this is like one step further mm -hmm. like i want the pattern and the design to yes. be resonant of, of some themes and this you go all into nourishing and growing right. and it it's just such a lovely like introduction um before actually getting to to the pattern itself mm -hmm. yeah and i do that in most of my designs i would say yeah and so you know what i talk about a little bit is how seeds then grow and how yep. the shapes of the stitches not only complement the yarn but growth um, and this particular one is called a beam stitch and how it sort of looks like you're growing out of the earth. Yep. And then I like to have some kind of balance. So I will repeat things yep. until the end. Um, and that's just, you know, that's all part of my It process. all seems like you won't get bored. Like there's a right. little bit of stockinette involved, but there's a lot of like, okay, next, next section, I'm going to learn this yes. other technique, which I love. I was just, uh, we were just chatting about the Stephen West pattern that mm -hmm. I'm doing, which is like also throwing a lot of different techniques at me, but it's, it keeps you interested yeah. in what you're doing, which I think is so fun. Right. And, and yet at the same time, I don't want to say it's you know, super beginner friendly, but there's enough tutorials that link to either videos or pictures that yep. there's no reason an, ad an adventurous beginner couldn't mm -hmm. pick up one of my patterns Great. and try it. And, and learn something in the yes. process, which I always love when you get to learn. And so, so you also feature uh, a, in the pattern itself, a very special uh, yarn that we actually spun here right. for Matt and Rachel from Meadow Fed Lamb. Um, I'm going to show you, this is, they just came in for another batch with their gorgeous fin fleece. And I think we've showed you all th this before, but we spoke to Matt and Rachel and they agreed to sell us 10 skeins only, uh, <laughs> because they just, they only have so many sheep and they like sell out of this yarn so quickly. I'm sure you saw them at yes. Wayland. Was that correct? Yes. So they, um, we got 10 skeins of it. So we're going to do a kit that includes Matt and Rachel's yarn, which is very similar to the one I think that's in yes. the sample that you're wearing mm -hmm. um, in our kits. So we, unfortunately, we're probably going to sell out very quickly of this, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome to reach out to Matt and Rachel directly. Their, their farm, again, is Meadow Fed Lamb um, and see if they have any yarn left or catch them if they're at Wayland again right. this year. I think they will be. I think they will be, but they are just doing wonderful mm -hmm. work. Um, at their at their gorgeous farm with their just sheep that seem to like be so happy they don't even get any vegetation <laughs> in it at all <laughs> um but then you can also knit it with some of our other farm fresh right uh yarn so we'll have kits available with farm fresh yarn that's from local farms mm -hmm. and then as well um our making tracks of course for the variegated yes. which is 100 percent natural wool and from the u.s and and right. all made here <laughs> yeah yeah and so that's really you know the story behind it and it's so i just want to touch it it looks so beautiful and squishy but yeah squish it um, Ooh, yeah, I, will, I will squish it <laughs> right there's people who say wool sniffers um which i'm totally a wool sniffer i just want to like dive into the, yeah. the bins 
It's so beautiful. And again, when it, you know, the connection to people, when I did buy it at Wayland, mm -hmm. I mean, they, the, they so passionately talk to you about their farm and sustainability and, yep. you know, the three colors they have. And I yeah. mean, they're just passionate about it as you are. Well, and it, you know, Peggy and I have talked about this before, but like you, can't, you don't really get into sheep farming trying to like mm -hmm. get rich. Like you're, you're <laughs> in it because you absolutely love it. Right. At least not around Vermont and New England, New York, where they are. It's, it is, um, or I think they're in, sorry, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, but they, you know, they just put a ton of care into it and what they're making is absolutely gorgeous. So we, we love to work with them and are so pleased to have a couple skeins from yes. of theirs to sell. Yes, I'm thrilled that you have it. I think that's just a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for coming on the Millcast. Thank you, Amanda. And I'm really excited to cast this on and start to learn like some of these techniques are going to be totally new to me yes. as well. Yes. So I will keep you posted about how that's Sounds going. Good. I might knit another one with the group. Too, yes. So. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm, I'm... Well, you don't have to wait long. You can cast on next week. Yeah. I've got to pick out my colors though. And I'm very torn because I, I, I'm really loving the hogwash farms with the Rame with the Ramella, the the dark gray. So with the Rambole? Yeah, the Rambole. Sorry. Yeah, I can't wait. But so we, um, yeah, I haven't picked my colors out either. We will reveal those when we get yes, on yes, next yes. week, I suppose. Yeah. But I have some kits um, to tell you about. Yeah. This one is what this sample yeah, is knit so out of. So this is the um, Settlement Farm Fleece. It's the Montedale um, Cheviot Merino. And it's knit with a little bit, of, or it's knit with our making tracks late October. Right. So, and that's exactly what this is. Yes. Although, although like every skein of making yeah, tracks every, is yes. different. So. But what's fun is it's, it has this sort of uh, 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 yellow green and then this Merlot uh, red. And it, it's just, yeah, it's very, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. this is going to be available as a kit through our site, and it'll include the pattern. Um, we also have a very special, very limited edition. Yeah, very edition. limited, but... Um, we have some of Matt and Rachel from Meadowfed Lambs Yarn. Right, they're in Hadley, here. Massachusetts, and, and we, it's thin. It's thin. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. We only have 10 skeins. Yeah, we, yeah. So... We are going to do a very special, very limited edition kit um, that we're telling you about now that includes the Meadowfed Lamb yarn and the Carnival. Carnival and uh, Carnival, tracks, yeah. Which should, um, you know, it is definitely different it's, than this. It's similar. The what, the big difference is it has a little shot of yellow in it. Yes. Um, otherwise, it's pretty dead on. We don't make on. this color. Any, this is right. berry jam. We just for Can the we say why we don't have berry jam anymore? Go for it. <laughs> I couldn't repeat it. I, I, we tried so many. I think that's where this came from. Right. Early, <laughs> early on, I, I, I made this. It was berry jam. And I'm like, oh, I love this. But I hadn't taken notes because I kind of didn't. This is way in the beginning. And for the life of me, I couldn't replicate it. So the closest I got was Carnival. And I actually love Carnival. And it yeah. does really well. But Carnival came out of my attempt to yeah. replicate berry jam. All right. That was enough truth. So again, we'll have this very special limited kit um, yeah. available for a short time only. And it'll include the, the full color pattern from Erica. But um, if you want to build your own kit right, that you don't ask, see through the yeah. site, you're welcome to pick out. It's just one skein of our farm fresh yarn right, and uh, one uh, skein of our making tracks yarn. Right. And the pattern in that case is it going to be available via Ravelry. Um, we're, we'll link it below. We're going to do the kits will come with the pattern, but we're not going to sell the pattern standalone otherwise. So you can go to Ravelry and find it, print at home. Yeah. Pretty easy peasy. Yeah. It just occurred to me, I wonder what it would be like if you did two making tracks that had a, that were very different. Try it. That would be great. I might. It's two skeins of yarn. <laughs> it's two skeins of yarn. Right. Yes. Huh. That may intrigue me. Yeah, I never like to go straight down the path. I like to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that'll, that'll be great. So we hope you will join us. Absolutely. And, uh, it's it's going to be a really cozy piece. I just love yeah. how the neck, um, the funnel neck, and then you've got the over the shoulder, very similar to the shoulder season pattern that right. we have, but yeah. with this beautiful neck. And then there's so many fun stitch patterns. I don't think we're going to get bored. Right. And, and this. we should point out part of the stitch patterns is mosaic. If you haven't yes. done mosaic before, it's nothing tricky about it. It's just you're going around that twice because you're 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 not doing stranded knitting. You're, you're only carrying one strand of right. yarn at a time. Right. I highly prefer that to stranded right. knitting. Right. And it's only in per certain sections. Yep. So um, don't do not fear the mosaic. But you yeah. will learn some fun new techniques. And yeah. What and we talked about it in the interview, but I love how much detail Erica puts into and thought into her pattern of what 
what stitch pattern she's using right. and, and those sort of tell a story. And, and this one, as you heard, is, is just great. So Very can't cool. wait. All right. Um, yeah. I have something that I knit oh. to show. Great. I have nothing because <laughs> okay. this is pre-recorded and I'm still trying to deal with my hat. Yes. Well, oh, I finally finished oh, the embroidery. I can't wait. Okay, it's not actually finished. It's not blocked. But ta-da! Wow! So this is a motif. So I knit this sweater using the Ann Bud sweater book. Right. It's just a raglan sweater. I, I did, what do you call these things? These little... The, the raglan and the, the, I don't know they no, have a name no. there a yarn over yeah like yarn overs for the raglan I love the, the that kind of raglan yeah and it was just a straight up um kid's sweater hey and oh I can be with Same. your daughter and we'll yeah. go we'll go pick flowers together there you go and then uh, I um, something else the motif I sort of was inspired by the Deegan um flower power sweater which was um, designed for adults and using intarsia but I use the double knitting technique or duplicate stitching excuse me duplicate stitch technique to embroider it yeah so top. you literally embroidered on top of the stitch yeah. which is wild yeah so the yeah. one other thing I have to do before I can block it and be done is just like all of my edges on this I just knit them too dang tight for some reason so I'm gonna snip snip the edge Ooh. of this sweater, Urgh. pull it out. I Sorry. think I'm going to make it a little bit longer in the ribbing, and then I'm going to redo my mm. Italian bind off because it's okay. like what it rides up. You okay. know, I want it to okay. be warmer than it is. But yeah. she already tried it on. You're seeing a picture. She loved it. And um, excellent. Yeah, I'm ex I'm excited to I'm see very how impressed. it works. But yeah, uh, this was sort of my first attempt at like not following an actual you know explicit pattern and uh -huh. it's, you know it's, it's following the and bud method and then making this thing up and i had a lot of fun D didn't you like the and bud method though i did i don't think it actually is meant to go as small as mave is like i think i want to say huh her smallest size is like a little kid's not a toddler oh okay i'll have to double check that but i think that's why initially i made the sleeves way too long because okay. i followed the inches and okay it, yeah so i i think i like sized I did some like size up in needles, size down in yarn, or vice versa to right. get it to work for yeah. the number of stitches and what I was doing. But it, it totally worked. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'll definitely try it again because cool. it feels it feels creative. Yeah, it's very so, creative. That is that. Yeah, I'm still working on my penguino. Maybe it'll be done by the time this airs. We'll see. Oh, that that I gotta see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, 2024, ready? Are uh, you ready? I, I suppose we have to be. Here it is. Here, here it is. Um, in our last millcast, we kind of looked back at the things that we um, that were memorable, big moments for the mill in 2023, and um, the the reality is we also have some very big stuff uh, uh, coming at us. Yeah, this year uh. is going to be wild. Yeah, um, I should just start for me personally. I'm having a baby. You are having a baby, and you are having a baby <laughs> soon. Yep. So that's going to be the big story for me. I think that yeah. will overshadow most of the other stuff. As it should. As it should. So I'll be on leave for three months, leaving the mill in excellent hands here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of whom one of them is going to be a new person. Yes. Who, uh, TBD. TBD. <laughs> but we're we're very excited that we're expanding and um and. Uh, just the right time yes so we will have yeah. more folks in here you guys all be holding down the fort yep. while i'm spending a lot of time nursing uh, yeah a baby. <laughs> yeah sleep deprived uh, nights. Yeah. yeah i get it i get it yeah so um we we, we know that the spinner is going to have a huge impact on 2024 yeah uh, not only is it going to allow us to hopefully keep things in stock but because of the the speed that the, the spinner can work at we are excited about the prospects of being able to get into some sport weight yarn Yep. Uh, don't know when that'll happen, but it's 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 on the we want it to happen yes, list. Yes, that's definitely high up there. Yeah. We've also got some fun new colorways we've been cooking up. Yep. We're excited to launch those at yeah. some point this year yeah. um, for the Making Tracks line. And speaking of lines of yarn, the Farm Fresh line, or or whatever we're going to call this, the Thousand Pounds The Thousand experiment. Pounds. <laughs> the Thousand Pounds. <laughs> that yeah. is... Uh, that should have a big impact for us, too. That'll help us have a little more um a deeper bench when we get a color because that's been our big challenge is that we get a solid color that we've dyed like what i'm wearing and and then it's and then it's gone and, and so for those of you that haven't been following along closely peg sourced a thousand pounds of raw wool from this great farm in upstate new york yeah got you... my brother phil roped in to help out um yep. bagging it because yep. that was no small task <laughs> and then Boy. you organized to freight it yeah we had, to it, we had it freight it down to um jamestown south carolina where they are going to scat they are scouring it 
It, it is now, I'm going to talk past tense. It's been scoured. <laughs> we hope. It, and then it's going to be freighted back up here. And so then it will we'll get into dyeing it and um, spinning it. And I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. And that, it, we just really don't have the capacity to, to, to scour, scour yeah, that, that quantity, quantity. of yeah. wool. So it's really going to be nice to have some clean local fleece to work yeah. with um, that's in, in a sort of just a yeah, scoured and, and, state. Yeah, and very ho- uh, hopeful that if this if this experiment works, um, we'll, we'll continue to do that and, yep. um, source large quantities of wool that we, that we know is great wool and get it scoured down there and then work with it here from that, for yep. the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. Um, we're also, uh, we, we shared in the past where we got into Maryland sheep and wool, Woo! which, uh, that's the uh, first weekend in May down in the, um, kind of DC area, West Friendship, uh, Maryland. It's a phenomenal festival and we're, we were surprised we got in and as they say, delighted. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I think it'll be our first trip with the babe. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think just, it should be about two months postpartum for yep. me. So we um, booked a, my husband and I booked a place to stay that's a little cushier than we might have otherwise, because it's going to be very much sort of a festival work slash family vacation for right. us. And Cody's got some family down in the DC area, so we might tack on a visit to them. That's but great. I have only been to that part of the country once, so I'm really excited to, nice. to drive down and, and just sort of see what it's like. And oh, yeah, it'll you be got, warm Yeah, you got to take that newborn to the Smithsonian. You know, <laughs> you got to culture this kid immediately. <laughs> right, immediately. <laughs> and, and Maeve, make her, you know, run around and, and discover things yeah. and report back. Yeah, It'll be great. But I'm I'm also just so excited to, to just see the fiber scene in a different area yeah. you've spoken so highly about it's, all yeah. the breeds of sheep that they have there right and... wait till you see the sheep to shawl event it's just crazy yeah um yeah fun and well, we're, we're gonna definitely go to rhinebeck again this yeah, year oh too, yeah rhinebeck so... 2024 for sure we'll be in the we'll, we'll be in the same booth um yeah lots of festivals on the on the calendar which mm-hmm. is great what else are we gonna look for um a thousand pound sport weight. Well, uh, oh. on a sort of minor note, we just like we're thinking about this the other day. We have this cone winder that right. works, and we're starting to think about like how how can we use it? What are some things that enables us to do? Mm-hmm. We're talking with people who've got machine um, uh, m- uh, knitting, knitting machines, or we've talked about weave, you know, getting yep. some stuff woven. So I think that's something we're not we don't for sure know what we're gonna do, but this year I would <laughs> why love, would we? <laughs> I would love to experiment <laughs> with like a finished good at some point. Yeah, um, yeah. So the cone winder is going to enable that because oftentimes these machines work off of cones and they yeah. want the longer length. Like we can fit four of these skeins right. on a cone. Yeah. And so they don't have the breaks in them like yeah. you're going to get in the skein. So I'm excited to see what we do with it. It's, yeah. it's on our minds a little bit. And um, Yeah, it would be it would be cool to be able to say here's a here's a finished product for those who who aren't knitting um or crocheting that, that here it is all, all set and yet it's our our, our you know, locally sourced and, and made at Junction Fiber Mill. It would be cool. Yeah, it would be yeah. very cool. Um, what else? Oh, um, I know this sounds ridiculous. Okay. If you live in the area, you know that we have a sign outside. Um, and sometimes it's just, hey, open house. It's like a little sandwich sign. Yeah, you can sandwich change, sign. change the, the letters on it. And um, I... You sh- got that. You were like, we need a sign because we are in a high traffic area. Yeah, we have a lot of people and driving by and they're, and they're rubbernecking idea. seeing the beautiful colors in the windows but we just thought a sandwich sign was a, a good that's idea a genius so you and, that's been your baby <laughs> yeah I, it's very low tech let's put it this way it's safe you could let peg do that one <laughs> she, she won't screw up the website whatever but oh it's sort of like God. okay we don't have an open house what are we going to say so i have been putting up sort of hokey puns sheep and wool related um, but I'm running out, and I need some puns. Okay, we need to definitely give full a lot of credit to whom? Oh, Todd, Todd <laughs> loves these puns. He's given a lot. His best. We will, we will rock you. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's been out there. Um, but but I need more, and they need to be short. It can't be like a joke that goes on forever. Just, you know, something that's maybe under six words. So if you're a punster, and you can include... You know, U E W E or Wool W O L, wool, yeah. um, shearing. You you know what the deal. Um, send it my way because I got a sign I got to fill yeah, up. Leave yeah, leave a comment. We'd yeah. love to to hear. Yeah. Um. I so we'll just have to see what twenty. Oh, we, well, I can tell you what I know. Twenty twenty four is going to include, which is our next festival. It's one of the great ones, the Russell Garden Center, which I know Garden Center doesn't sound right, but they do a a, a fiber day twice a year 
uh, once in January and once in March. And uh, January 21st, I will be there. Um, and it's just a great, it's in Wayland, Massachusetts, uh, easy to get to. And, it, you know, you're inside this greenhouse with all this fiber and cold outside, but fun and cozy inside. Great food, really great food, actually. Um, so if you're, you know, at all in the area or want to excuse to get to the Boston area, mark your calendars uh, January 21st. It's a Sunday. Yeah. I think I got the right day. It's a Sunday. Well, I'll link it in the show notes yeah, okay, for thanks, sure. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's what's going on. So we wish you all a super happy new year. Yeah. We hope that whatever is on your... Oh, oh, you know what? Before oh, we sign oh, off... Oh, yeah. Okay, I almost forgot. We have some great photos of what you knit last your oh. best knits of last year oh, we we're, got it. We're that's a go great out way to go that. out on what you <laughs> loved knitting in 2023 yeah i was just gonna say whatever's on your next to knit list but you all submitted yeah your favorite knits of 2023 that, that weren't necessarily done with junction fiber mill yarns no. it's just a, a, a pattern you loved yes so we did a holiday box giveaway a few episodes ago and as part of that you submitted through Google Forms, uh, the photo and yeah. story behind. So we're just gonna go out on a little montage of um, your favorite knits of 2023, and maybe it'll provide some inspiration Absolutely. for 2024. But if you need inspiration also, look no further. Yeah, the knit along. <laughs> the knit the along. along. All right, yeah. folks. Enjoy these images. Have a great new year. Bye. Take care.